Well, good evening. I'm Ryan. This is 780 Speed and Custom. Back on the Biscayne, obviously. I think we're on episode 16 now, and I've had a few more parts show up. So, last episode, if you didn't catch it, I built a custom fan shroud for the aluminum radiator I got off Amazon. I think it's going to work great. So, if you haven't seen that, you can go back and check that video out. Um, but yeah, I had a whole bunch of parts show up. So, just a lot of little stuff that I needed, some wiring harnesses. I was missing a uh, dipstick for the engine. But I did pick up a set of cast manifolds. They're... Uh, Similar to stock, not quite, but uh, just with this angle, it clears, which is nice, gonna work. Cast manifolds are gonna be a lot nicer, quieter than, uh, than headers, and we're not trying to make horsepower here. I mean, it's just a 4.8 liter, and uh, the whole goal is to make a nice cruiser, nice runner, nice driver. So, cast manifolds, I've got most of my fuel system. Uh, Got a fuel pump here, GSL 392. So it's only good for about 600 horse, but that's still twice what I need for this car. So we're good there. Whole bunch of little fittings. Um, I was missing a coil, mounting bracket for the, for the pump. Just some uh, different lines, that kind of stuff. The biggest things, obviously, I managed to get a brand new fuel tank. Um, I was just kind of browsing Rock Auto, and this was on there for a whopping $78, so I couldn't really turn that down. Uh, I mean, I probably couldn't have even cleaned the old one for that, so that's a good deal. I also picked up an intake. Now, I might get some hate for this, but... Keep in mind, I'm not trying to make horsepower. These intakes rob horsepower. And then I went and did something silly and put a big throttle body on it. So what I've got here is uh, the short runner aluminum intakes off of Amazon and uh, <laughs> a 102 mil throttle body. But reason I went with this is because the factory intake, the truck intake that came on this engine it's too tall, wouldn't clear the hood. So had to go somewhere shorter, something shorter. And I did not want to spend $1,000 on a fast intake or, um, you know, like a, a Camaro, one of the plastic intakes. All the aftermarket ones are, are ridiculously expensive. The Holly ones are very nice, but they're, again, they're north of 1000 Just not willing to spend that kind of money. There is an option, hey, kitty. There is an option for a uh, roughly $200 intake, but then you've still got to buy fuel rails, throttle body, all that stuff. This intake actually comes with all of that, less the throttle body, but then this was only 100, 150 bucks Canadian on Amazon. So that's really not bad. I think I'm all into intake, throttle body, fuel system for about 600 Canadian, which is probably like 25, $30 US. So that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> what is going on, buddy? Sorry. Oh, this guy is kind of lonely, maybe a little bit needy. Um, so what else have I got here? Oh yeah, I've got transmission cooler. We'll need that for the uh, 4L60. A new pickup and level sensor for the uh, fuel tank. This is a return style, so um, I'm, I basically, I'm copying a design that uh, I found with another YouTuber. I'll put a link in here, because I can't remember the, his name off the top of my head. Um, but I like what he did with the fuel system, so I'm kind of copying what he did. Um, obviously, external fuel pump, C5 Corvette 
fuel filter, which has the regulator built in. So I'll mount all that at the rear and then we'll send that 58 PSI to the front um, and just deadhead it at the, uh, at the intake. So that should all work out. Nothing left to do but to uh, start installing this stuff. So we'll get to it. One of the major complaints online, or I guess two of the major complaints, were A, that the fuel injectors are really tight going in, can't get them in, whatever it may be. Um, yes, they are very tight. I installed new O-rings on the bottom, which helped. The old ones must have been a bit swollen. Uh, and they slid right in. A little bit of force, but you do want them to be tight because you don't want it to leak. The second complaint is these brackets are all too long. Well, they're going to be if you're running stock injectors. Stock injectors are shorter. A lot of the aftermarket ones are the, the taller style injectors. So if you're running aftermarket tall injectors, brackets will work just fine. If you're running factory injectors, you are going to have to cut these down. So pretty simple. I'll just uh, mark where I need to drill a new hole, cut the top off, and you know make, it, make these brackets work with the factory injectors because obviously we're not making big horsepower stock injectors will be just fine so I will modify start modifying these brackets show you what I've done there and I'll uh, go ahead and start installing the other side fuel rails get those injectors o-rings changed and uh, finish finish putting this together so once I finish building the fuel system we'll pressure test it make sure there's no leaks should be good to go. Obviously, second set of rails on. Now, I've started modifying the brackets. I've got one installed already, just to show you that that works. So all I'm doing, that's the factory bracket that came with the intake. I am taking these, kind of lining it up with that bottom hole, and then marking with a center punch through the fuel rail itself, so I know where on here to drill and then drilling that down and cutting the excess fat so basically we want to go from that to that this will bolt in there if I can I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not but yeah kind of yeah so you can see that will now line up. So I've just got to finish modifying the rest of these and I can bolt the fuel rails down. Okay, so all the brackets are modified and mounted. I put the uh, cap on the driver's side front of the fuel rail, so I'll feed in here. It'll transfer over in the back, deadhead here. Regulator's gonna be at the back, so that'll work just fine for my fuel. Um, actually, I'm quite happy with the way this thing looks. It's really good. Um, only complaint, this one screw, I don't know if this is focus, yeah. There's a manufacturing defect right there. So I had to find my own screw. Had one that worked, not the same, but it will hold it. So fingers crossed, 
that seals, nothing leaks. Now all I've got to do is put my map sensor in and uh, fittings for brake booster, vac you know, vacuum fittings, that kind of stuff. On the back of the intake, it's got a spot for the map sensor here. And there's a uh, quarter inch MPT bung there. And then there's more on the bottom of the intake here as well. So I'll plug off the ones I don't need, install my map sensor at the back here, and uh, I can bolt this thing to the cylinder head. So just about ready to rock and roll here. One more complaint I read about online is the map sensor. Now there is a port here for the map sensor. It's M10, I believe. If you're taking a one bar map sensor off of a Gen 3, Gen 4 uh, truck, whatever, it's not gonna fit. This is too loose, this is smaller. This is designed for the map sensor off of an LS3. So if you wanted to use this port, I'd buy an LS3 map sensor and you can actually buy harnesses to adapt it to an LS1 harness, LS2 harness, whatever, or modify the wires yourself, but the connector is different. So what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of using that port on the back here, some guys will silicone it, change the seal, it's still not gonna be perfect, is on the bottom here, I've plugged off these three ports and I put a 90 and a barb on this port. So I'm just gonna cut the seal off, run a short piece of hose from this fitting to this map sensor, I'll tie this map sensor off, probably to the fuel line, whatever, and uh, that'll work just fine. So this is all I did for the uh, map sensor. Just a short piece of fuel hose, a barb, take the seal off here, work just fine. Well, obviously everything's installed now. Um, it's gonna be a hot minute before I can fire this thing up. Yes and no, I've gotta finish the fuel system, run some sort of an exhaust, at least the headers on it, and then uh, my engine wiring harness, engine transmission wiring harness. Before I can fire it up and A, check for fuel leaks and uh, make sure I can make this thing run with a one or two throttle body on it. But uh, I don't know, I, if, if you're thinking about getting one of these sheet metal intakes, it's not a whole lot of work to make them, uh, to make them work. The bang for the buck is definitely there. It's, it's a cheap option that's obviously gonna work. Um, if you're building a race car and you're trying to make horsepower, I don't recommend going this route. Yeah, they're cheap, but uh, your airflow is not gonna be great. They do rob horsepower and uh, it's, just, it's just not ideal. Uh, you're way better off sticking with a stock intake, like a, the truck intakes are actually some of the best intakes you can get um, or you know go with, with a Holly or something like that. But, for what I'm doing, just trying to fit an intake under the hood, not worried about power, this is actually a pretty good option. So, fingers crossed, everything works out, but I think it will, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Ryan, this is 780 Speed and Custom, tuning out.